My name is And for the past three years, I've been researching the strange goings on within a town known as Royston Vasey. The government have been trying to sweep this under the rug for god knows how long, and everyone I seem to speak to outside of the UK seems to think I'm talking about that really crappy movie that came out at a similar time. You see, in 1998, a local police station were getting an increase in reports of people going missing. But each case had one thing in common. Each person was last seen passing through the town of Royston Vasey. So, on the 11th of January, 1999, the police created an operation with the code name The League of Gentlemen, and began creating case files for each individual within the town. The operation lasted for about a year, I think, before eventually shutting down and never spoken about again. That is until recently. There are rumours that the Operation League of Gentlemen is coming back, so I've been doing some digging and I've managed to pull up some of the files on these individuals within the town. And some of the things they've done are... extraordinary, to say the least. These people are dangerous, and this is why I'm making this video. If you ever encounter these people, I urge you to try and turn the other direction, and go just walk and never look back, or run, even. Run's probably better. These people can do things. That said, let's take a look at their files. Papa Lazarou, age unknown, languages. English and Jipog, gibberish. Location, unknown. Appearance, a creature in the form of a man who has a black and white face, which seems to represent a more darker and sinister version of a clown. Black, curly hair, can be seen wearing a top hat and either a red or black suit. About, he's the ringleader of a circus called Papa Lazarus Pandemonium Carnival. He has three helpers known as Simba, Pebble, and Tick Tick. His black and white face isn't makeup, it's his actual face. If he ever wanted to hide from the public, he's had to cover his face in makeup. He learned how to do this from the many wives he had in the past, which leads me to the reason why you should avoid this man. Papa Lazarou moves from town to town performing his circus, but during the day, he would disguise himself as a peg salesman and break into women's houses, making them his wife, before eventually kidnapping them and taking them back to his circus, torturing them. Some of his wives are put into cages and hosed down with water, others are stuffed into animals at the circus. This creature is probably older than a hundred years, because we found a book of wives he keeps with pictures of them all in it, and some appear to have lived over a century ago. Even the local vicar, Bernice Woodle, who is a fully grown adult, had her mother kidnapped by Papa Lazarou when she was only a child. Before she went missing too, of course. An estimate is that Papa Lazarou has had around 1,062 wives that we know of. It's most likely many more. He came close to his capture when he arrived back in Royston Vasey, impersonating as a man called Keith Drop, working at a charity store, before eventually being confronted by one of the real husbands of his many wives. The owner of the store managed to capture him and tie him to the bed before he escaped. The husband and the charity shop owner were reported missing a few days afterwards. Papa Lazarou is still out there, and I encourage you all to stay vigilant as this isn't the only person you should be worried about in Royston Vasey. The second file is on a local woman known as Tulip Tatsirup, but most people call her Tubbs. Age, 33, languages, English, location, local. Appearance, chin dimple, pig-like nose, glasses, usually wears a blue cardigan with a headscarf, about. 
She owns the local shop at the edge of the town in the fields with her husband slash brother, Edward. They live together in this local shop that was passed down by their mother. This shop, before it burned down, was the most dangerous place to go in the town. It's said that these people were serial killers. It's reported that most people who go in don't come out. It's also said that the people who never came out were most likely people just passing through the town. These two seem to have a problem with anyone who isn't local. However, Tubbs has a more childlike innocence to her personality. She is more likely unaware what she is doing is wrong. She tends to struggle with maths and believes anything not local is a bad thing. She likes pigs and has reported to breastfeed them from time to time. She has even been caught eating a hare sandwich and a cockroach too. But while she may have a childlike innocence, she still likes to cause trouble and over-exaggerate stories for her husband and brother, Edward, to be outraged by. Which brings us to our next file, Edward Tatsirap. Age, 84. Languages, English. Location, local. Appearance, glasses, rotted teeth, pig-like nose, in a black suit with tie, about. This man is believed to be the true mastermind behind all the disappearances within the local shop. With Edward being so much older than Tubbs, it's more than likely he brainwashed her growing up to be like this. It's been suggested that he killed and burned the victims that went missing in this local shop. If that is true, then that means he's killed over 500 people. Nearly every single one of them was because they weren't local. He's a man who has claimed to have fought in the war. This may be the reason why he thinks anyone who isn't local is a danger to his shop. He is outraged very easily and believes anything his wife slash sister, Tubbs, tells him. He can be rather melodramatic when speaking, almost as if he thinks he's in some kind of Shakespeare play. He has butchered animals before and stitched them together to try and scare away builders who were creating a new road that would bring in new, non-local people to the town. A few weeks later, the new road was cancelled after the man behind the idea called it off. It turns out, after doing more research, the person behind the idea to create the new road was Tubbs and Edward's son, David. This leads us to the next case file. David Tatsira. Age, younger than Tubbs. Languages, ex-English and beast. Location, unknown. Appearance, I can't remember. About. David was born in Royston Vasey. He is the son of Tubbs and Edward from the local shop. He left the village to go to London to study and explore the world. This led to a falling out between him and his father. However, his mother forgot he ever existed. Edward probably had something to do with that. He's a rather kind and loving gentleman who loves to explore and try new things. David eventually set up his own construction company, but wished to get back in contact with his parents again. So he managed to get a contract to develop a new road connecting to Royston Vasey to help bring the rest of the world to the town. After countless builders went missing near the local shop, David finally went down to see his mother and father. And that was the last time anyone ever saw him. However, some people in the town have reported hearing strange noises coming from the shop ever since David went missing. Some believe he went full local and now lived in the attic of his parents' local shop. That is, of course, until the townsfolk burned it down. Moving away from the shop and entering the town, we come to the file of Hilary Briss. Age, he has crossed oceans of time. Languages, English. Location, unknown. Appearance, ginger hair and sideburns. Red in the face like a tomato. About, used to be the butcher in Royston Vasey, before starting the nosebleed epidemic which killed hundreds of people. By the time the police discovered he was the cause of the epidemic, he escaped, and it's unknown where he is to this day. Before this whole thing came about, though, he worked at the butchers where he supplied a particular kind of meat and sold it to a select few in secrecy. Whatever it was, was highly addictive to those who tried it. He would call it 
the special stuff. Hillary was always a rather shifty character. He could never keep his tongue in his mouth. You would never see him angry, but you would most certainly always see a grin around that face. It was later discovered that he had a wife that was actually a cow. The reason the nosebleed epidemic broke out was because of the special stuff he was selling. It eventually went into the wrong hands, and someone he trusted began selling it to the rest of the town. It was then later discovered that the special stuff caused a really bad nosebleed that resulted in death. Once Hillary had discovered this, he fled the town and left his friends to die. The police were looking for where he may have gone for over a year, but once the Operation League of Gentlemen was called off, they stopped. So to this day, he's most likely still out there, alive and well. Next one. Jeff Tips. Age, old enough. Languages, English. Location, Royston Vasey. Appearance, frizzy hair and mustache, usually wearing a suit and tie. That was before the accident. Jeff is a plastic molding salesman. His two colleagues he works close with are known as Mike and Brian. Despite this, Jeff has repeatedly said he doesn't like them and constantly accuses them of talking behind his back. He has a cruel sense of humor. He even faked his own death at his friend's wedding, thinking it would be a great joke. He is known to also have a very bad temper. If he doesn't get his own way, he will more than likely throw abuse towards you and send you threats. If that doesn't work, Jeff has been reported to own a real gun and has pulled it out on several occasions when things aren't going his way. Once he pulled it out on his friends when he refused to tell a joke that he couldn't remember. We believe he has some kind of bipolar disorder, as that would explain his lashings out every so often to the smallest of things. He believes he knows more than he actually does. According to another one of his friends, he got lost in the forest nearby and nearly ended up killing one of them. On the final day of the League of Gentlemen, it was reported he was involved in a terrible incident while driving a van and crashing it into someone's garden. The doctors say the injuries were so severe they've had to completely reconstruct his face. However, the operation closed before this happened, so they never updated what he looks like now but there are still hints that he has a gun which the police never got to investigate. Pauline Campbell-Jones, age 48. Languages, English. Location, Royston Vasey. Friends, Pence. She has no friends, only Pence. Appearance, ginger hair, big round glasses with bright pink lipstick. Her clothes are basically a Mark and Spencer's look. About. Pauline probably comes across as one of the most vicious characters from any of the others on this list. However, she's not as dangerous as the others, or at least she hasn't had chance to be. She used to work at job seekers to try and help people who were unemployed find a job. The only problem was she wasn't very good at it. The unemployment rate is known to be incredibly high according to certain sources, and it's quite possible she may have been one of the reasons why. After a man known as Ross Gaines went in undercover to secretly review Pauline, he found out that she was treating everyone in the room, including him, like a piece of dirt. Constantly hurling abuse and even injured Ross at one point after he made a snarky remark to her. Eventually, Ross got her fired, and after a while of being unemployed, she just snapped. Eventually attacking Ross once again, but this time holding him hostage in the job centre to try and get attention. However, Pauline had an accomplice, known as Mickey Michaels. Mickey wasn't very bright, and Ross managed to trick Mickey into setting him free. Ross contacted the police and they arrested Pauline before she could do any more damage. A year later, she was released from prison, eventually falling in love with Mickey and getting married. It's unknown what she's up to now, but maybe going to prison fixed her problems and saved her from doing any more damage around the time she snapped. Now we move on to our final and most deadliest characters of them all, Mark Gatiss, Reese Shearsmith, and Steve Pemberton. These names are feared when mentioned amongst the Royston Vasey residents. They have done many things. It's suggested that they are the ones causing the events in Royston Vasey, and everyone around them 
are just mere puppets in their game. They've been reported to have kidnapped a man known as Jeremy Dyson too, who's never been seen since. We don't know where these men are right now, but we urge you to keep an eye out. These are only 10 of many, many characters out there who are very dangerous. But don't take my word for it. Look it up yourself. Go online and search the League of Gentlemen and you will find clips of many more dangerous characters who live or have lived in the infamous town of Royston Vasey. You may be asking, why now? If this all happened years ago, why are you bringing it up now? Because there are rumours that Operation League of Gentlemen is coming back, meaning the danger is starting all over again. I warn you all to stay vigilant, do your research, and stay away from Royston Vasey. If you enter, you'll never leave.